Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Bulfat. His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Saudi Minister of Investment Engineer Khalid bin Abdul Aziz Al Falah at Trufa Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of historic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, which continues to be reinforced by the support of both His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. His Royal Highness noted the importance of further strengthening bilateral investment partnerships across sectors to meet joint development goals. His Royal Highness commended the far-reaching visions and goals that have been set by the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council, including the opportunities it has created that benefited both countries and their people. His Royal Highness noted the efforts of the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman Abdul Aziz Al Saud, in this regard. His Royal Highness noted that Bahrain offers wide-ranging facilities that continue to attract investment, particularly within the kingdom's priority sectors, which support the economy. For his part, Engineer Al Falah expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet with His Royal Highness, noting His Royal Highness's commitment to reinforcing Bahraini Saudi cooperation. He wished the kingdom further progress and prosperity. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa and the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunication Mohammed bin Tamar Al Kabi also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa attended the 7th edition of the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism held under his patronage. His Royal Highness noted that the media is an essential partner in helping to achieve the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized that the press plays a responsible and pivotal role by supporting the Kingdom's national economy and by showcasing its wide-ranging achievements on regional and international national level. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم بين الناس أن تحكموا بالعدل إن الله نعم ما يعظكم به إن الله كان سميعا بصيرا 
يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا صدق الله العظيم His Royal Highness commended the heads of the National Press Institutes for their outstanding efforts in forming local, regional and international audiences on the Kingdom's ongoing development projects. Awards were then presented to the following media professionals. Best Column Award went to Khalil Youssef from Al Ayam Newspaper. Best Investigative Journalism Award, Rajid Al Ghaib from Al Bilad Newspaper. Best Interview Award, Hassan Al Sitri from Al Watan Newspaper and Muhammad Al Jayousi from from Al Bilad newspaper. Best Photography Award went to Yusuf Tolifet from Bahrain News Agency. His Royal Highness congratulated the winners and wished them further success in their careers. His Royal Highness expressed pride in the efforts made by the Kingdom's media professionals to raise awareness and knowledge in a responsible, fair and ethical manner. The Minister of Information Affairs, Dr. Ramzan bin Abdullah Naimi, thanked His Royal Highness for sponsoring the award ceremony and supporting freedom of expression, which is a fundamental component of the Kingdom's constitution. Dr. Naimi congratulated this year's winners, noting that their Awards represent the Kingdom's appreciation for their efforts and highlighting that their achievements incentivize their peers. For their part, the winners expressed their gratitude and appreciation for His Royal Highness's continued support of the Kingdom's media professionals and institutions. Several senior officials, journalists and media professionals also attended the ceremony.
The first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, is leading the Royal Endurance Team in the Spanish International Championship amid wide participation to compete in the 120 and 160 kilometer races. Zana Sheikh Khalid affirmed that equestrian sports in general and the endurance sports in particular receives the support of His Majesty the King, which enabled the Royal Endurance Team to achieve success following following the global level achievements they made. He also hailed the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, noting the government's keenness on promoting this long-standing sport. His Highness commended the efforts of His Highness Sheikh Nasser in achieving the visions of His Majesty the King and endeavouring to further develop equestrian sports, especially the endurance sports. He noted that His Highness Sheikh Nasser's role in developing the endurance sports represents a source of pride. He stressed the importance of participating in the Spanish Endurance Championship, noting the role of this sport in bringing landmark achievements to Bahrain. He noted that it is one of the major international competitions that witnesses wide participation, indicating that the Royal Endurance Team includes young elements capable of making achievements. His Highness stated that supporting the youth is a priority in light of the keenness on providing the optimal atmosphere to achieve positive results. He wished the team success in the championship. Speaker of the Council of Representatives Ahmed Lemsellem praised the Bahraini press national achievements and efforts in highlighting Bahrain's comprehensive development process led by His Majesty the King and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Speaker expressed the Council of Representatives' pride in the national endeavours of the Bahraini press and praised the continuous efforts of the Information Ministry, the Bahrain Journalist Association and all press associations in supporting the Bahraini journalist scene. El Msellem congratulated the winners of the Prime Minister's Award for Journalism and all the participants for their outstanding work. He affirmed the keenness of His Majesty the King to support the efforts of Bahraini journalists and columnists to project a positive image of the kingdom at the local and international levels. The chairman of the Ushara Council, Ali al Saleh, asserted that the Prime Minister's award for journalism is a milestone in the long march of Bahraini press and it has become a catalyst for motivating media personnel, highlighting the creativity of Bahraini journalists in, a, in exercising their freedom of opinion and expression as well as consolidating the values and principles of democracy and press freedom, which are flourishing during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. al Saleh expressed pride in the major strides made by the press in the kingdom under His Majesty the King's reform project, highlighting the remarkable progress made by Bahraini media and press outlets. He commended the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to the vital roles played by the national press, citing His Royal Highness's keenness to involve them in government achievements and paving the way for them to contribute to enhancing the development process. He congratulated the winners of this year's edition of award, praising their valuable work. He also paid tribute to the Ministry of information for its keenness to motivate and encourage media and press competencies. The Shura Council held its weekly session presided over by its chairman Ali al Saleh. The council approved Decree Law Number 36 of 2022, ratifying the framework agreements and the agency and guarantee agreements between the government of Bahrain and the Islamic Development Bank. It also approved Decree Law Number 37 of 2022, ratifying the loan and guarantee agreements between the government of Bahrain and the Abu Dhabi Fund for Development. 
The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dana, participated in the UAE Climate Tech Forum. The minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness on bolstering environmental and climate cooperation for the interests of world countries and to achieve sustainable development goals. The minister commended the pioneering role of the UAE in supporting modern decarbonization technologies and building the economy and green industries. He praised the UAE's professional organization of conferences and major events Events, mainly those aimed at preserving the environment and handling climate change by switching to clean energy and investing in the renewable one. Under the patronage of the Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Dana, the Minister of the Middle East Sustainability Forum announced the launch of its second edition on January the 9th, 2024, in the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the title Achieving Zero Carbon Neutrality, the way to accelerate implementation to support regional efforts to reduce carbon emissions. The Minister stated that this launch came after the success achieved by the first edition at the local, regional and international levels. He said that it affirms the Kingdom's keenness to support initiatives and programs that enhance national partnerships and international cooperation in various fields of sustainable development. He noted the importance of continuing efforts aimed at enhancing cooperation, raising the level of coordination and exchanging experiences between countries, organizations and parties concerned with addressing the effects of climate change and fulfilling international commitments, agreements and treaties concerned with climate, the environment and sustainable development. The Joint Bahraini Saudi Business Council held its fifth meeting, co chaired by the Chairman of Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Samir Nas, heading the Bahraini side, and the Chairman of the Joint Bahraini Saudi Joint Business Council, Abdurrahman Al Atayshan, heading the Saudi side, in the presence of Saudi Minister of Investment, Engineer Khaled bin Abdul Aziz Al Falih, Bahrain's Transportation and Telecommunications Minister, Mohammed Al Kabi, President of the Federation of Saudi Chambers, Hassan Al Hawazi, members of the Joint Council from both sides, and several officials. Speaking at the meeting, El Fala has stressed the prominent role played by the Bahraini Saudi investment projects in the private sector, noting the levels of investment cooperation between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and the importance of continuing to strengthen it to achieve common aspirations. For his part, Nas expressed pride in the deep-rooted fraternal relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia, highlighting the growing economic cooperation between both sides. He stated that Saudi Arabia is Bahrain's largest export market and seventh largest import market. Primarily, Al Atayshan underlined the importance of the meeting, which comes within the framework of achieving and activating cooperation with the aim of developing trade and investment relations between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. The meeting discussed the items on the agenda, which included presentations on the major development projects on both countries, reviewed the strategic directives in light of the economic scene, and updates regarding streamlined trade. The CEO of Bahrain Mumtalikat Holding Company, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, met with the Saudi Minister of Investment, Engineer Khalid bin Abdulaziz Al Falah. They reviewed aspects of enhancing cooperation with the sovereign investment institutions in Saudi Arabia. They discussed investment opportunities available in Mumtalikat's investment portfolio companies, which will support its efforts to contribute to the national economy and promoting investment in the kingdom. Sheikh Abdullah stressed the importance of the role of the Saudi Arabian. A coordination Council in strengthening the strong economic relations between the two kingdoms through the work program of the Council's committees, which will contribute to achieving the vision aspirations of the leaderships of both countries. Chief Executive of Bahrain Economic Development Board Khaled Hamidan received Saudi Arabia's Minister of Investment, Engineer Khaled Abdelaziz Al Falah, during the minister's official visit to Bahrain. The visit comes in line with the ongoing efforts to maintain cooperative and collaborative economic ties between the two kingdoms. Maidan highlighted the vital role of EDB in attracting direct investment across the priority sectors outlined in the Economic Recovery Plan. He elaborated on the mandate of EDB of enhancing the overall investment climate to drive sustainable economic growth. The meeting also discussed potential areas of cooperation across the priority sector, namely financial services, manufacturing, logistics, ICT, tourism and respective strategic projects in line with the economic recovery plan.
Meanwhile, representatives of Sudan's warring parties will resume talks today on how to implement plans to deliver humanitarian aid and remove troops from civilian areas. The parties will remain in the Saudi Red Sea city of Jeddah to start the next phase of the negotiations after agreeing on Thursday to the plan to protect civilians. The kingdom has also invited General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, head of Sudan's Transitional Governing Sovereign Council, to an Arab League summit which is scheduled to take place in Jeddah on May the 19th. Sudan's Civil Aviation Authority said the Sudanese airspace will remain closed to all traffic until May 31st. The authority said in a statement that humanitarian aid and evacuation flights would be exempted as long as they obtain a permit from relevant authorities. Sudan's airspace was closed to regular traffic after a military conflict erupted between the country's army and the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces RSF in mid-April. Oman and Ittihad Rail Company, the developer and operator of the UAE Oman Rail Network, has signed a memorandum of understanding with Vail, one of the world's largest mining companies, to explore utilizing rail to transport iron ore and its derivatives between the Sultanate of Oman and the UAE. The rail link will connect Vail's industrial complex in Suhar Port and Frazon to its planned mega industrial complex in the UAE. This agreement reflects the logistical importance that the project will provide provide to major international players in several different sectors. The signing ceremony was witnessed by Minister of Energy and Infrastructure and Chairman of Oman and Ittihad Rail Company, Suhail bin Mohammed al Mizrouri and Brazilian Ambassador to the UAE, Elena Zogheib. And Turks voted today in one of the most important elections in modern Turkey's 100-year history, which could either unseat President Tayyip Erdogan or usher in a third decade of his rule. The vote will decide not only who leads Turkey, a NATO member country of 85 million, but also how it is governed, where its economy is headed amid a deep cost of living crisis and the shape of its foreign policy. Opinion polls give Erdogan's main challenger, Kemal Kellerdulo, a slight lead, but if either of them fail to get more than 50% of the vote, there will be a runoff election on May the 28th. Voters will also elect a new parliament.